Hello everyone and welcome back to my all-electric pickup build. So far we've pulled the blown engine out of this 1982 Toyota pickup and then in the last episode I discussed the process of selecting an electric motor. In this video we're going to be mounting said motor in the pickup truck and coupling the motor to the existing transmission so that it can drive the wheels. This process includes making a coupler for the output shaft of the electric motor, then mounting the back of the motor, and finally making a cradle for the front of the motor. Let's get started with the coupler. As I mentioned in the last video, the electric motor that I'm using has a keyed output shaft on either end that can be used to drive a gearbox or a pump. Our first goal is to connect the motor output shaft to the input shaft on the existing transmission. And we need to do this so that the motor can propel the car. Now that sounds easy, but if you take a look at the two shafts, you'll see that they are a very different configuration. And there's definitely some custom work to be done here. That's because the motor output is a round shaft with a keyway, while the transmission input is a spline shaft that has about two dozen teeth on it, give or take. They also have different diameters. So the first step is pretty simple. We just mount a rotating aluminum plate to the motor output shaft, press it on, and lock the shaft and the plate together using a small piece of metal in the keyway. This is pretty consistent with the way that crankshaft pulleys are installed on combustion engines, but in our case we just don't have the bolt to hold it in place. The rotating plate really just provides a substrate for the female portion of the coupler. That's all it does. Now in order to have the motor drive the transmission there are a few different paths that you could take, but I'm going to show you the quickest and cheapest solution that I came up with that was also robust enough to do the job. Cheap and quick always works out well, right? Anyways, what I did was I stole the clutch off the blown engine that I took out of the truck. Now obviously this inside, the inside of this clutch has a splined receiver that matches that of the transmission. So basically what I did was I drilled out these four rivets that hold the assembly together and then I bolted the clutch to the rotating plate. If you're going to do this, you should use robust, high quality bolts that can withstand the shear force they'll experience under load. And that's all I did. I threw some Loctite on the bolts, but what I ended up with here is basically the existing clutch mounted to the motor so I can drive the transmission. This clutch is no longer used to slip and provide friction when starting from a stop. It is purely used to couple these things together. So now the electric motor and the existing Toyota transmission are permanently rigidly coupled. All right, so now the motor and the transmission are coupled. The next step is to mount the motor securely in the engine bay. Just like the gas engine, it's going to be mounted once in the back near the transmission and once at the front. We'll start back at the bell housing. You probably noticed the giant aluminum plate that's attached to the back of the motor. I got it like that, so please don't judge the shape of it. I'm just working with what I got. Anyways, this plate is just an adapter bolted to the motor so that I can connect it to the bell housing of the transmission. The bell housing is basically just the metal case that all the parts of the transmission are housed in. There are four bolts securing this adapter to the motor, and I drilled out holes in line with the transmission bell housing so that I could mount it to the transmission using six stainless steel bolts. Once all these bolts are in place, the electric motor is now rigidly mounted at its back to the transmission. Now we need to mount the front end. Every different make and model of car will require a unique motor mount setup since this is a custom job. But for this truck, it actually worked out really well. The old gas engine was mounted at its sides here and here and it almost lines up perfectly with where the front of the electric motor lands in the engine bay. For this reason, my idea was to make a cradle-like mount for the motor that supports the front end. And I started by suspending the motor in its final resting place by using my engine hoist. Then I bolted a piece of scrap steel plate to the front of the motor with four evenly spaced bolts. Then I hit up my pile of scrap steel angles and bars to figure out a way to connect the steel plate to the original motor mounts that I pulled off of the gas engine. It's kind of like a really heavy, messy puzzle, but eventually I had it all mocked up and I welded all the pieces together and threw some paint on it. This is the perfect time for a brief aside on the Harbor Freight Flux Core Welder. This thing was $100 
came with the saddest little welding helmet, but it worked. You can probably tell I don't weld at all, so it took me quite a few tries. I think what it comes down to is finding the right settings and just keeping your hands as steady as possible. When I was doing this, I would weld it and say, oh no, that looks like shit, then grind it down and weld it again. But after a few tries, I got it good enough to pass the sledgehammer test. What I ended up with was not the prettiest thing ever, but so far it's been working as intended. And this is where you can start to see things come together. The motor is in the car, it's mounted securely, and the motor and transmission are coupled together. That's going to be all for this episode. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed. Also, join me in the next one where I'll cover the motor, controller, and some of the accessory circuits.